I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen at the Super Bowl parade in Kansas City, Lee Summit, Overland Park. I hope you're listening. Uh, Gannon stays in Arizona. Okay, who's your OC? That's my only question. James Jones will be here. James Jones, who, I mean, he called the Green Bay Packers going to the Super Bowl. We'll have to bring that up to him. Sebastian Joseph Day, very excited to have him on the day after Valentine's Day, a.k.a. The day where candy is 50% off everywhere. CVS, Target, gas stations, wherever. You're welcome. Anybody who's ever done a Super Bowl week in, in the nature of Media Row and doing a daily show and all of that, when you get back, it is as if you were hit by a Mack truck. I'm not even kidding. My back is, like, I can't even sit. I really can't. And I've given up on life. I'm wearing sweatpants. I don't even tie my shoes. Like, this is, I walked in here like this, and I walked out of my house like this. And that's how it's going to stay for the foreseeable future. That's just what it is. I'm wearing a hockey sweatshirt. What am I wearing? What am I wearing? Uh, my throat hurts, everybody's ache. It's, very, it's a very weird adrenalized thing that stops and falls off a cliff once you get back to wherever you came from. And we're here. Marissa's still coping. I want to hear from Eagles fans. Are you back on the internet? I know, you know, I know A.J. Brown is. Ooh, we're going to get into some of that. We do uh, have a lot to talk about. But yes, Valentine's Day, 50% off. It's like the, and Valentine's Day rivaled only by Easter candy as the best candy aisle situations in, of the entire calendar year. So get yourself the Reese's Hearts. Those are my favorite. They're like 50% off right now. Get a big box. You can get like 12 in a big box, and those are incredible. So go ahead and do that. Um, we've got a good show. we got James Jones on the program. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in the Super Bowl parade, which I believe is set to kick off at noon uh, Central Time. So excited about that. That happens uh, here on this Wednesday. And we have eyes and ears in Kansas City that will check in with ahead of this thing. There's already people lining up ready to go. It's like a tailgate. They're, they're grilling. They're making barbecues. All the things are happening. Drinking that, uh, oh, my gosh, Boulevard Wheat. Is that still a thing out there? Back in my Mizzou days, I'd put those down with a slice of lemon. Um, well, we got some news to get to that happened yesterday. A c- couple pieces of big news. First, the Cardinals didn't let Eagles DC Jonathan Gannon out of Arizona after the Super Bowl. They lock him in as their new head coach, and this is how I feel about it. They move from, you know, an offensive coach who was called innovative. I don't know that he was, but he did. that's what, what they brought him in for, to be this uh, bright, young, offensive mind that can do things and make Kyler Murray fly. And they go from that to one of the best young defensive minds in the game. Gannon helped this, I will say, loaded Eagle squad finish second in total defense this season. So the Cardinals hope that he can turn around a defense that finished bottom of the league. They were 31st in the NFL last year. Uh, the question remains, and I'm throwing my hands up, all of it's Kyler. It's why I, if I was, was Bidwill and I want Sean Payton, I want somebody that's going to get Kyler back on track. Um, and that's going to be the only mark of success, and that's the only factor that really matters in Gannon's success in Arizona. So I naturally just look at who the, is the OC. Like, the choice is going to be, I think, in the ecosystem of the NFL, one of the most critical hires of the offseason. So that's definitely something that I'm going to be watching closely today going forward. Um, And now, you know, the Eagles have to replace both coordinators. That's not fun either. And that's in addition to almost 10, nine starters that are set to hit free agency. So Roseman is going to have to knock it out again with another big offseason. But as like I've said a million times on the show, if there's one GM that I trust to do it and make it happen, it is him. We also um, got some big news out of Vegas, everybody. Excited about, gosh, the Super Bowl is there next year. Somebody asked me yesterday, what do I want to do for my Super Bowl for up and Adams? And I go, we're planning this now? Yay! It'll be so fun. Here's the news. They officially released. We saw this coming. We were ahead of this on our show yesterday. Um, they released Derek Carr, and, it, you know, it makes him a, a free guy. He can sign wherever he wants to, and he's going to have his share of new options. Um, as I think, you know, the top quarterback, my back hurts so bad. As the top quarterback, I'm so old. What is the problem? What ha- what, do you think it has something to do with the 12-inch heels I wore all Super Bowl week? I think that maybe m- misaligned my back. How about the bag full of all sorts of things? The things I had in, in my bag were unbelievable. We should have done a what's in my bag. A computer, sometimes two computers, one that I wasn't aware of, a charger, 
uh, a bunch of hats, a bunch of Up and Adams hats, probably a pair of jeans, a pair of sneakers, um, colored pencils, Spanx, all sorts of things, more what? Different heels to change into. What a world. Okay, so yeah, Derek Carr, he's released officially. He's the top guy, right? So then you got these teams that we talked about in our Love Connection segment, the Jets. You got the Saints, the Panthers. They got to decide what's the move here. Are we going to slide into the DMs? Are we going to swoop up and lock in Derek Carr? Or are they going to hang around and say, no, I'm going to pass and get them off the Eliminate bus? Remember that, Eliminate? You don't remember that. You're too young. Um, she goes, no, I don't remember. Do you remember Roger Lodge? What was the show that Roger Lodge hosted? Blind Date? Blind Date, yeah. But there was an Eliminate bus. Remember, they'd go on the bus and they'd all talk and then they'd get rid of one? Never mind. Okay. So do the Jets do that? Do the Saints do that? Do the Panthers do that? Or do they wait it out and say, no, Derek Carr, you're really nice. Like every, you know, nice guy treatment. But what, like you're just kind of too nice. Who else, who's over there by the bar? Is it all the Lamars over there? Aaron Rodgers? Oh, he looks dangerous and uncomfortable. Great, let's do it. So uh, our guy, Cam Jordan, by the way, made his thoughts on the situation pretty clear yesterday. Here's what he said. I know I said audio social media, which he did. But Derek Carr, I know it may be too soon, but it's also Valentine's Day. Are you gonna try to swap out black and silver and fall in love with black and gold? He wants him. I like the idea. I, I also think it's so dumb to have anybody be like, I'm gonna be off social media. Just go off social media. You don't have to announce your exit to social media. Cam Jordan, what are you, still drunk off 818 tequila? We know the Saints uh, tried to trade for him. That's info that's out there. I wouldn't be surprised if we do see him reunite with Dennis Allen, that's his former head coach. Uh, and I think the Jets are probably gonna make a, a pretty tough sell and hard push, maybe send a Valentine or two his way as well. Um, because they had to deal with all this drama and rotating stuff at the quarterback spot last year as well. And they, I'm sure, they want, you know, you want what you don't have. And what you don't have in New York, and maybe you, you know, at least with Zach Wilson, you need a consummate professional. A professional, somebody who's consistent, somebody who can handle what it takes to be in New York. It really is a thing. So Derek Carr's, you know, bell of the ball. And I love this for him. Wine and dine him. Send him the chocolate. Send him the caviar. Like, send him the sweet messages. He's going to have plenty of choices, and I hope... Uh, that he keeps some of those options open rather than just giving in and accepting any given trade. Because he, and I said this yesterday, I hate his the deal he got, raw deal, nine years. He gave nine years, and I saw that Raiders message, I hated it, I just hated it. Nine years to his organization, so he, I hope, is selfish in this, which probably won't happen, but I hope he's selfish, gets wined and dined and makes the best decision, not for anybody else, but for him going forward. Now, today is also, I'm just taking my shoes off at this point. Um, it's the Chiefs Victory Parade, okay? It all kicks off at 1 p.m. Eastern, noon there in Kansas City. Um, but we do have reports that fans have been lining up at 6 a.m. this morning. So we have boots on the ground that we're going to check in with in just a little bit. Do not miss that. But Matt Hamilton is here. We both went to Mizzou. We know the Kansas City area very well. Do you remember Boulevard uh, Wheat Pints? Of course. <laughs> Delicious. I also remember Eliminate. Eliminate, yeah. Marissa goes, yeah, I know what you're talking about. No, I don't. She's like, no, you're, you're old and you've got back problems, lady. Remember That's what next. she said to me. Next. Oh, she says she remembers that. Roger Lodge, you don't remember Roger Lodge? Come on. Um, okay, so Matt, I thought that we, we could go through some of the things that I just know are going to happen at the parade. Here's what's gonna happen. In no particular order, and I'll get your quick thoughts here, Juju Smith-Schuster and Jackson Mahomes absolutely team up, create a TikTok, and break TikTok. That's, it's definitely going to happen. I mean, remember, Jackson kind of, we didn't see a lot of Jackson this year. He was, uh, he kind of faded into the background a little bit, and then he was, he was out there uh, on the field in the confetti. Uh, he yeah. resurfaced, so I think we're definitely going to see a, a, an encore performance, and Juju has to be Let's a part go. of it. Let's go through these a little quicker and maybe not show the screen with all of them. And we can just do that at the end once we reveal them. Does that sound good, Conrad? Let's do that. Okay. How about this next one? I, I cooked up. AJ Brown then shows up and he Derwin James on Travis Kelsey suplexes Juju Smith Schuster. Viral moment ensues because this was on the, on the day of love, where I'm sitting here and banging the table and saying, the world is screaming for more love, this happens. Juju, <laughs> Juju, Juju, I mean, I'm happier Super Bowl champion. I probably just saw this graphic Valentine making and poking fun at James Bradbury. Uh, this is what happened. Do we have it? Hello. Anyone, anyone viewing? There we go. 
Juju Smith Schuster, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. And he says, I'll hold you when it matters most. Ouch. This is so funny, though. It truly is funny. A little too soon. And But I mean, to have Juju tweet this out is not a good look. And then AJ Brown, of course, responds. And he's just lost a Super Bowl after such a great season. First of all, congratulations. Y'all deserve it. This is lame. You was on your way out the league before Mahomes resurrected your career on your one-year deal, TikTok boy. He admitted that he grabbed you, but don't act like you'd like that or ever was. But congratulations again. Woohoo! I mean, it's a perfect response Tick from AJ. TikTok boy. Just, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> did, did Juju respond? Uh, Juju did. Uh, Juju said... Glad you were finally able to get all that off your chest after all these years. Good game, bro. So, um, no. yeah, not not the best clap. I mean, it's hard. It's harder. A AJ, that was perfectly done you by AJ because there's coming. the respect. There's the there's the congratulatory nature of it, but then also the TikTok boy and and the rest of it. It was, um, yeah, you yeah. do. You, I mean, if you're gonna tweet that out of your juju, you know this is coming. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go through these faster. A little fast. Like, wake up, Hamilton. Let's go. I, you know, we were talking before the show. Who wins the podium? And it's not Juju and it's not Travis Kelsey. Uh, it is Chris Jones. Chris Jones wins the podium. Best speech. He does really well in his post. His pressers. His like you know tight moments in live spaces after games. Emotional ones. He steals the show until Donna Kelsey comes out and she grabs the mic before Travis can even get to it. And she says. You got to fight for your right to party, you jabronis. And then she actually steals the said show. And I think that happens because I was watching the New Heights podcast and listening to it. And Jason and Travis, emotional, of course, were all about how so they were emotional over their mom getting her moment and her love, which I thought was not where I thought the conversation was going to go, Hamilton, but she's going to steal the show. Yeah, I mean, if we get a jabronis out of Donna Kelsey, I mean, that's going to be uh, that's that's going to be the greatest parade moment of all time. That's it. Now, how about this? A corn dog tattoo. It's got to happen. Do not let me down. Overland Park, Raymore, Lee Summit, Armor Hill, St. Joe's. You know, we all know corn dog, the name of the play. The funnier part about this hammer is that Peter King could not believe that corn dog was the name of the play as if, as if, you know, like Andy, it's Andy Reid. You really don't think Corn Dog could be the name of the play? Like he didn't say F Bill Belichick. Like that would be weird. Like that would be a weird play. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was, it's very on brand for Andy, no? Yeah, exactly. This is exactly what you hope for, what you expect out of Andy. I love yeah. the explanation too, uh, with the ketchup and mustard. Andy really is, is passionate about the subject. So not a surprise. Yeah, he really is. You know who else has passion that we haven't seen? In a bit, it's been a little bottled up. Melvin Gordon's going to pop off today. He's going to, at some point, throw shade at the Broncos. I think he's been a little chirpy on Twitter, but he's been bottling this up. Yeah, definitely. It, it, weirdly, some Chargers fans came at him yesterday saying, you know, he was the guy that didn't do any work on the group project and gets an A, and he just tweeted back with him with a cigar and the Lombardi. Um, but he hasn't had, you know, he heard a lot of, a lot of noise from Broncos fans this year, so I'm sure he'll have something for them today. Oh, there it is. We got it. Way to go. There he is. Flash Melvin Gordon with the Lombardi. <laughs> How about this? Here's my next thing that's going to happen. Brett Veach will have, hopefully have, you know, a cocktail or two, feeling a little loosey-goosey. He starts, make them picks. Make them picks. He starts that chant as a subtle clapback at Les Snead, because we all know the Chiefs had four rookie starters and another six took the field. Yeah, and uh, you talked about it earlier this year in your underreactions. You know, it's one thing the Rams, you know, went all in to get that one Super Bowl, but the Chiefs have been focusing on retooling and building a dynasty, and that's working out pretty well. Ted Lasso, season three trailer dropped yesterday. Um, I'm going to need Rebecca and Ted to hook up finally, like – Enough with the biscuits and the stupid little pink box. Like, let's get something going between the two of them. That's my prediction. Early in the season, please, so they can get together, break up, go through some drama, and then get back together in the season finale. But 
I'm saying this to say this. Jason Sudeikis, <laughs> KC boy, where's the KC hat? He will be there. He will be on another float, not the home's float, and they'll play catch between the floats with the football. I'm here for it. The, the Chiefs have as many celebrity fans as any team out there, and you know those guys all have to be in attendance. Mm-hmm. I was with Rob Riggle uh, at the uh, FanDuel party on Friday night. He is so excited. I'm sure he'll be there as well. Paul Rudd, no surprise here. He'll be. I'm going to just pick the jersey. He'll be wearing a Pacheco jersey. It is the Pacheco jersey for Paul Rudd. Also, everybody's playing catch. The drunken Lombardi toss has become somewhat of a tradition. Gronk dented it by hitting it, using it as a baseball. You had the whole thing happen with it almost falling into the water when Tom Brady won with you at Tampa. And the, the somebody who's going to throw drunkenly the Lombardi trophy is Dante Hill. <laughs> I would not be surprised at all. You saw him in that box after the, uh, after the AFC championship win, just spraying everybody with champagne. We know Dante likes to have a good time, and uh, I would not be surprised. And my last one is that Nobody goes shirtless. I didn't even check the temperature. It might be 70 degrees in Kansas City today. No one goes shirtless because Aaron Donald ruined it for everyone. Your thoughts? <laughs> I mean, yeah, he, yeah. I, I, I'm never taking my shirt off again after seeing this guy. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. <laughs> It's 38 degrees. No one can go sand yeah. shirt. Though I will also say this, and we'll get to this. Travis Kelsey is the hottest thing on TikTok right now. I have people, the Haley's, the Haley's. I got people out of the woodwork the bothering, me, bothering me about, who's Travis Kelsey? Who's Travis? And I'm like, he's a Super Bowl champion. He had a reality show called Catching Kelsey where he dated like 40 broads. Like, what are we talking about? And he, and nobody, like, nobody, but now TikTok has really done something with Travis and people are so if Travis wants to capitalize on that and he's you know I'm sure he would take the shirt off Kelsey did you just say broads what are we doing I don't know what I'm saying what a day I don't know all right but let's uh thank you Hamilton let's check in with I'm sure he's so happy to be on the show today Tucker Franklin of Kansas City Sports Network is coming to us from the parade site Tucker the parade is a couple hours away yeah you're there give me everything what's the scene well, let me tell you about it. It is a balmy 37 degrees here in Kansas City, so you're not going to see any shirts off. I can tell you that. I've seen some shorts. Uh, vibes are high. Beers are flowing. As you can see behind me, uh, we got a Union Station right here where the party's going to take place after the break. gets all done. Fans are lining up. It's been great. Connection might be spotty because there's just a ton of people here. People love the Chiefs in Kansas City, obviously. It's filling up. Let me tell you this, Dante Hall, last time he came on my show, y'all won the AFC championship game over the Bengals at home in Arrowhead. And he was complaining about how fans weren't that excited, that fans are complacent. Y'all are used to these big wins. Tell me he's wrong. Yeah, I know. That's quite right. I know that there's a lot of younger generation uh, that might think that, but uh, I know that there's been some people who have lived through a lot of playoff losses who have lived through a lot of the uh, the playoff struggles for the Kansas City Chiefs that aren't taking this for granted. And you can tell by the people here that they are uh, they're ready, they're excited for these guys to come down and hit so Tucker show Tucker put the camera around. Let us see some of that scene. Our eyes and ears there in Kansas City, a 37 degree situation. He's saying no one's taking off their shirt. That's obviously wrong. So I will ask you this. You heard some of my my predictions. I called my shot a bit here. What do you think is going to happen out there today? I do think Travis Kelsey is going to come out and maybe the most ridiculous act you've ever seen. He's going to one up Jason Kelsey, right? Jason came out in that wild outfit. You're going to see him. I believe he came out in a, in a Louis robe last time. Uh, so I think you're going to see something very similar uh, to what he had. And I'm excited to see what Travis Kelsey comes up with. We're going to see a beer pour from the top of the bus. That's what's going to happen. We're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, beer-related things, whether it's uh, beer losers off of the uh, Lombardi Trophy, whether it's pouring from the top of the neck of the bus. It's going to get rowdy here. People are excited. We're already getting lined up. It's, it's uh, good vibes. Good vibes all over. Yeah, hopefully we'll see. Yeah, Travis Kelsey has to wear something to out-mummer the mummer outfit that Jason Kelsey wore. That's a good point. Uh, how many how many brews are you having today? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, I'm I'm doing as many as they come to me. Uh, so I'm just gonna gonna 
just kind of relax a little bit. You were talking about the top of the show, the Super Bowl week. It's stressful when you got a team you're covered in it. So, I mean, uh, it's nice to kind of take a load off and, and celebrate. And uh, we've got a few already. I've got one in my back pocket ready to go uh, because I knew that as soon as I get Let's off Let's see. Today, we're going to. All right, we're going to. Go yeah. Tucker, we're wishing you a good day. We appreciate you so much. How, how many times do you think the name jabroni is said? The word jabroni is used today. I don't know if there's a number to quantify how many times that people are going to use the word jabroni because it's already been played about three or four times over the speakers here. Uh, just uh, <laughs> Travis Kelsey's clip. Uh, so they're getting, the, they're getting the fans fired up by just playing that clip over and over. All right, you guys can follow Tucker Franklin on social media. We'll get this all out there. And when the Tech Nine starts hitting that Red Kingdom, I want footage. Okay, buddy? Yes, I'll get it. I'll make sure to tag you in it. I'll get it out there for you. We appreciate you, Tucker Franklin, covering all, all things from these Chiefs Super Bowl parade with a beer in his pocket. And I love it. I love it. Tucker Franklin, what a star. We love it. Uh, and he's with KC Sports Network. We appreciate him, BJ Kissel, and all those guys doing such great work, not just in football, but everywhere. James Jones, do you have a beer in your pocket? Yep. Are you just happy no, to I'll see win. us? Get on my Get on my level. Get on my level. I'm too fly, up too high. Get on my level. Way too strong, way too gone. Get on my level. Got it up, and it's stuck. Get on my level. Oh, woo! James Jones with that celebration. He's joining us right now. He played wide receiver for nine seasons in the NFL, eight of them in Green Bay, where he became a Super Bowl champion. James Jones, let's go. <laughs> What's going on, Kay? What's happening? Listen, I love that Bulls 91 cap. No, no lie. I love what you got going on there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's talk about 2023. Right. Mm. Go ahead. Mm. No, I must say, you always know I bring the swag to the TV show, man. That's it. Oh, I know. <laughs> I already know. Okay, Derek Carr. I'm so mm. upset for him because he gave wow. everything to this org. Yes, because he, he gave every because he gave nine years to the Raiders and he took yeah. them from Oakland to Vegas perfectly. And he's yeah. always been a consummate professional. And he took this team to the playoffs. And I I thought it was a little bit of a I, I don't like how yeah. they handle it. I really don't. But I understand you have some thoughts on this. And you, did you, have you talked to Derek Carr? Yeah, I actually talked to my dude yesterday, man. I had a, had a little conversation with him, and I told him, uh, go to the Colts, bro. <laughs> um, and he kind of just laughed at me and laughed it off and all that, uh, you know. But, no, I've, I've knew Derek Carr, man, since he was at Fresno State. I always knew he was going to be special, man. I used to work out with him down there in Fresno State. So when we got a chance to play with each other in, in, in Oakland, uh, the, the Oakland Raiders down in Alameda, um, we knew he was going to be a star. Um, I mean, I, I kind of hated how the whole situation unfolded as well. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, everybody knows that this is a business. Derek Carr is learning that this is a business now, and, he, and that's why he's handling the situation the way he's handling the situation. You know, uh, but wherever he goes, okay, you know, and, and I'm assuming it's either going to be the Colts or it's either going to be New Orleans. That, that would be my guess. Um, wherever he goes, he is going to take a team to the playoffs, and we will see what happens from there. I mean, Derek Carr is a, a great thrower of the football. I think whoever gets him is going to be extremely blessed. Why are those your guesses based off your conversation with him? Because a lot of people want to bring up the Jets as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, just, just me knowing him, my conversations with him, um, and just what they have. I mean, you're talking about two teams that have a really good defense. I mean, you're going to get my man Leonard back in the middle for the Colts. That defense is going to be playing at a high level. The Colts have a really offensive line when they are healthy. The Saints have a really good offensive line when they are healthy. And then the playmakers around them. You're talking Jonathan Taylor. You're talking Alvin Kamara. You're talking Chris Olave. I mean, he just has a lot of weapons around him on both sides of the ball on both those teams. And I just think that would be the best fit. Both of them are in domes. You know, both yeah. divisions are not both divisions are not strong, you know, so you're going to have an opportunity to go in there and really be the best team in the division. Now, you were uh, with Carr and you love Carr. And I know that mm -hmm. you were with Carr. Yeah. And tell me if I'm wrong. I think I'm just shooting off the hip here. You were with Dennis Allen at the same time. Mm -hmm. Both yeah, of them I was in DA Oakland. Too. Yeah. So what's that? What would that fit look like in New Orleans between those two? 
Well, D.A. definitely has the the upper hand, knowing that, you know what I mean, he was there when they drafted Derek Carr um, to, to the Oakland Raiders. So they have a really good relationship. So I know he wouldn't mind, you know, reuniting with Coach D.A., you know, and their personal relationships and all that. I mean, he's the one who came in the meeting and said, Derek Carr is my guy. He will be starting on this football team, even though we traded for hmm. Matt Schaub. Derek Carr is going to go out there, and he's the one, you know, that's going to lead this ball club. So they definitely have a really good relationship. So when you sit down in the meetings, D.A. definitely going to smile at him a little bit like, hey, bro, <laughs> I'll let you start this thing. I'll let you start this career off the right way. So, you know, he's going to have the upper hand. But the good thing is, is you know, D.C. going to have the opportunity to meet with these teams and, you know, meet with these coaches and, you know, kind of kind of go where he feels his best. That's what I said. I just said, I hope, go, go get wine and dined. Say, I want the PJ. Mm -hmm. Take me to dinner. Yeah. Invite Chris Olave. I want to see everybody. Like, take us to the finest food in the finest places New Orleans has to offer. Take me to New York. Yep. You better get me that seat that Eli Manning gets at Rayos because nobody <laughs> can get that seat. I try to get that seat, but Derek Carr yeah. better get that seat if they pull up. So nope. I like that he's the bell of the ball. Yeah, no doubt about it. He's the hottest thing out right now, right? Nothing is going to move until this Derek Carr piece you know, gets 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 placed, you know. So all these quarterbacks are sitting here waiting on Derek Carr. All these teams are sitting here waiting on Derek Carr. So if it was me, oh, you better believe it. I'm getting on all these PJs. Y'all going to spoil me. I'm going in here. <laughs> Everything's free. You know, my mama always told me if it's free, take two. So I'll be everywhere <laughs> eating every day. <laughs> it, it'll be for me. So And, and he deserves it. He, he deserves it, man. He, he put his heart and soul into that, that Raiders – you know, organization, you know, through all yeah. the ups and all the downs, you know, so so he deserves it, man. And I hope he enjoys this whole little process. All right. Now, now, James, you're putting yourself in a bit of a corner here and I love you and I'm not trying to do it to you, but you're doing it yourself because uh, you're saying he deserves it. You're saying he's the belt yeah. of the ball. You're saying nothing's going to mm -hmm. happen until him. But if you are the Jets, if you are the Saints, mm -hmm. if you're the Colts, even you got that four number four draft pick and you might want to call, start calling Chicago and seeing if they want to trade all that nonsense. Right. You're saying yeah. Aaron Rodgers hasn't made a decision. <laughs> Our guy Aaron Rodgers is in some dark death tank. And yeah, God knows yeah. doing what, trying to figure out his life. What, yeah. How do you handle that? How do you manage that with the, you know, this sort of thing with Aaron looming again? Well, I mean, I wish I had the address to where 12 was because I'll pop up on him and we'll sit in the dark room and have a nice little conversation. And I'll let him know, man, you are retiring a Green Bay Packer. I don't I don't think we see 12 play anywhere else. I think Aaron Rodgers will retire a Green Bay Packer. I continue to say him and LaFleur, and I know everybody can say, you know, Aaron this, LaFleur that, whatever. But him and LaFleur have an excellent relationship. I mean, those two dudes are truly brothers. They truly love working together. So, number one, they are going to do what's right for both of them. You know, and I, I just do not see Aaron Rodgers leaving the Green Bay Packers. I think he will play there this season. Um, I don't know if he'll play another one there, but I think he will finish his career off as a Green Bay Packer and having an opportunity to go chase another championship. It's super interesting what's going to happen because I mean, we're talking about Derek Carr, but if you're the Jets, like yeah. you could get Aaron Rodgers, and there's all this talk about how Aaron likes New York, and he could, you can't get Derek Carr until you know yeah. what Aaron's doing. You can't. You have to sort of wait for both of these things to happen simultaneously. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I said it yesterday on our show. Aaron Rodgers... He's got a type. He likes to get in the media, but he likes to stick with what he knows. And he's got, I do think, and I would love your opinion on this. Christian Watson probably has a little something to do with him wanting to stay, right? Because that chemistry isn't easy yeah. to develop, and they clearly have it. But no, no, not yeah, absolutely. I mean, Christian Watson is going to be a phenom in this league. Romeo Dobbs is going to be a really good player. But when you look at the Packers roster overall, they are not far off. Now, everybody has seasons to where you have seasons like this to where, you know, things just ain't clicking and it's not going your way. But you, when you look at this roster from top to bottom, this is a championship roster that the Packers got built one or two free agents away, one or two draft picks away that could come in here and help contribute, you know, and that's with Aaron Rodgers under the center. And I think the Packers understand that. And I think that's why they want 12 back so bad, because they know with him under center and the roster that we have, we have an opportunity to go chase a championship. And. For, for the Jets and for all these other teams like the Packers are not crazy. We don't just want draft picks. Yeah. They don't want a good player. 
they're going to want good players for 12. So you got to pick up this $50 million contract. We are going to want good players. I just think it's going to be a lot for a ball club to give up for 12. And I think it makes all the sense to go back to Green Bay. So after these four days, when he's he's in that dark room, you better believe my <laughs> my my name will be the first name that pops up on his phone when he's able to answer. And I'll let him know, bro. You're going back to Green Bay to finish this thing off the right way. He made a lot about who's in his inner circle. Who is in his inner yeah. circle? Well, I better be. I know <laughs> I know that. No, I don't I mean I don't know everybody in his inner circle, but I know me and twelve are extremely close. I mean, you know, he talked to my kids more than he talked to me, you know. So mm. I mean I, we we are we, we are extremely close, uh been extremely close since day one. So, you know, I, I, I know if a decision is gonna be made and, and all that stuff. So I'm not saying he's gonna give it to me to break it, but you know, I'll definitely Yeah. Know. You yeah. didn't you didn't get the invite to the four day darkness retreat? I asked. I said, I want to go. I didn't get, and I said, I said, I I, I was not invited. You know what, Kay? I did get the text, but I just didn't respond. You know, I can't, I can't do that. I just, I act like I ain't see it. No, no, I, 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 I didn't get the invite, you know what I mean? I, I think that's something that, you know, hey, you, you got to do on your own. It, it'll be hard for me. I, I move around too much. I could I could, I could just sit in the dark room. I, I would go I'm immediately. If, if, if Aaron Rodgers invited me to that, I would go. I would, I, I would go today. As tired as You're I would ask, how could you not? Yeah. How could you not? So you were you able to give up phones? You, you can sit in the dark yeah. room? None of that? You good? Yeah. Not me. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. Just to say, I, I wouldn't do it like on my own. But if Aaron Rodgers yeah. is like, this is so great, I would just, I would just yeah. go just to point out how ungreat it is. Just like really, Maybe. I would just like to be that pain in this pain in his side. All right, listen, you and yeah. Rodgers are so close because you've been through a lot, ups, downs, and uh, the mm-hmm. highest up that there is, and the highest up that there is in what you do is a Super Bowl championship, and it happened back in 2010. And today's the Kansas City Chiefs parade. Take me to that parade to, uh, yeah. back then what you remember and what sticks out the most. Yeah. Well, number one, I remember, you know, after we won and, you know, you're coming back from Dallas and you get off that plane and you got a million Packer fans at the airport and it's just insane. Uh, we actually had our parade inside the stadium and you walk in that stadium and it's 90,000 people in the stadium. I mean, just going crazy. You interacting with the fans and, and all that stuff. It was, it was, it was crazy. It was a dream. It was a dream come true, you know, I tell people all the time, man, the reason why you see all these tears and you see all these emotions, man, you you are playing in the biggest game in the world. And, you know, everybody had different obstacles getting there. You know what I'm saying? Some people, Mm -hmm. you know, just just life journeys and all that, just getting there, you know, and being on this stage and winning this ball game. And, you know, you see all the tears come down, even the parade, man. We had even though it's a celebration, we had people with tears coming down their face like, you know, still in shock that that we got this thing done, and just to see the support of the fans, man. Like I said, a million people at the airport. You run into the stadium, ninety thousand more people at, in the stadium. I mean, it was it was it was crazy, and it's something that I'm 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 sad about that I only got a chance to experience once. You know, and the Kansas City Chiefs. This is their second time with Patty Mahomes and them experiencing it, and yeah. I know it's I, I know it's an unbelievable feeling. Over the years when you talk to Aaron Rodgers, does he ever talk about wanting that feeling again? Like, because I'm thinking if you're Aaron and you're about to go on, you know, I'm thinking he's, I literally think he's going like underground into some bunker, wherever he's going. Um, yeah. You know, he's got the, I, I, bet, I bet he's just going to like a Four Seasons and is putting an eye mask on for four yeah. days. That's what I really think is going on. But uh, if you do that, knowing that Patrick Mahomes has one more than you and he's going to be called... Yeah. The, a greater quarterback than you that is that the kind of thing that motivates Aaron Rodgers oh man I mean that just touched my soul right now saying you know Patty Mahomes mm. is greater than Aaron Rodgers and I, and I could be a little biased because I played with 12 and obviously if you play with Patty Mahomes those guys gonna be a little biased as well but um you better believe it uh me me being around Aaron me knowing a competitor that Aaron is I mean Aaron don't want to miss one throw he don't want to be off on one throw uh, just and, and that's in practice. That's in the games. I mean, he is just one of those dudes that's always chasing perfection. And you better believe that he wants to host up another Lombardi trophy and bring that thing back to Green Bay. Uh, conversations I had with him, that that's all he cares about. That's all he wants. And that's why I truly believe that it will be in Green Bay. He will play. He will finish yeah. because he is chasing that. And yeah, I'm not going to say it's more pressure on Aaron because Aaron has done, you know, 
crazy things in this league, you know, won the Super Bowl, obviously all the MVPs. I mean, a lot of success on the football field, but he wants another championship. And I truly believe deep down inside, you know, and, and he ain't going to say it. He's going to come in these dark room, but I don't think he'll, I don't think he'll leave until he gets it. Oh, yeah. I've, I mean, I, I would like to believe that's true. I don't know if it happens in Green Bay. If it happens in Green Bay, they got to do a little something else for him. They need to add a couple of pieces and they need to, I think they oh, need yeah. to sell him on some of that so he wants to stay. Mm-hmm. And so it's not just his decision. It's Green Bay stepping up to the plate in a big way and making that happen. And I'm with you. I'd like to see him win one because, you know, we can say what we want. But yeah, when you talk about the greatness, there's only one quarterback now that Brady's gone. One quarterback's won more than one Super one ring and that's Patrick mm-hmm. Mahomes and he's got to get into that it changes the game yeah. when you win two you're in a completely different world and he and, and Aaron deserves no to be in that world so he's got to get there um last one for you <laughs> did you see this like Juju Smith-Schuster AJ Brown thing <laughs> yes yeah I, mean, I hate it I, I hate mean, everything give me your thoughts <clears throat> I hated everything about it man Juju I mean it, 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 that this is to me this is disrespectful like You know, Bradbury came out. He stood up like a man, you know, after a tough loss, the biggest game Mm -hmm. in the world, and said, you know what, I did. I did hold him. You know, it it happens. It's football. You know, it was a little tug. I thought the ref might let it go. He did it. You know, it's a holding call. It happened. You know, for Juju to come out and do this, you know, I mean, I I just think that's a slap in the face. That's disrespectful. You know, you you, you didn't have to do that. And I absolutely loved everything about A.J. Brown's response. You know, if it was me, I probably would have went a little harder. You know what I mean? But but A.J. Brown, you know, still was professional about it. No, because, I mean, number one, number one, that's your brother. You know what I'm saying? And. You know, you you done battle with this dude in the trenches 24-7. You done built relationships with these dudes. Obviously, you know, you're closer with different dudes on your team. But 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 this is your brother that another person is disrespected after you've seen your brother stand up there, drop all this pride, you know what I mean, and and, and, and say that, you know, hey, I did I did hold. Him. You know what I mean? And for AJ Brown to respond like this, you know, as you can see, you know, he's still respectful, congratulating him. But but everything is true. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I, I believe everything in, in this tweet is true, man. Don't act like you like that. You know what I mean? Like you just a bona fide number one wide receiver and you like that. You know what I mean? And can't nobody guard you, everybody holding you. You know, after these dudes done showed you the ultimate respect, man, and, and lost with class and all that, I just felt like that was a little disrespectful. And that's, that, that's, that's a low blow by Juju, man. That was cold. AJ called him TikTok boy. <laughs> yeah, TikTok boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I see that. I mean, he threw a couple shots in there. Like I said, I mean, my, my tweet probably would have been worse than A.J. Brown. Respect to A.J. Brown, but you can't Man. do that, Juju. I mean, I, I know people talk junk and all that, you know what I mean? And, and, and that's part of the game, but this is this is, this is is disrespect. Man, I wish I wish Juju did that to you. I would have liked to see that tweet from Super Bowl champion James Jones. We uh, appreciate uh, you. We will talk yeah. to you soon. Uh, it, might I'm gonna need the a, it might not even been a tweet, okay? It might not even been a tweet. If I was Bradbury, <laughs> I might be at the parade right now, you know, just... <laughs> <laughs> it won't be Bradbury. Bradbury did his thing. Bradbury broke the yeah. rule and said I, it was on me. I'm, I think they got that security there AJ in case you better watch AJ yeah. Brown. AJ Brown's going to oh, Derwin yeah. James, Travis Kelsey suplexes ass. <laughs> yeah, if you see a big buff dude in, in, in a Chiefs jersey or something trying to get a little incognito, they better watch out. <laughs> they better watch out. James Jones, everybody. We appreciate you, your insights on Derek Carr, Aaron Rodgers. Somehow, James Jones is always the person when the biggest storylines in the NFL are happening. He's got connections to all of the characters involved. We've got Sebastian Joseph Day after this right here on Up and Adams. What up? Let's talk about Valentine's Day prefix menus. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Sebastian Joseph Day here, defensive lineman with the Los Angeles Rams. Come on a journey with me and try to discover some of the best food and coolest stories in L.A. There's a story behind every storefront. This is Dime and Bash. Yeah. Dine and Bash, baby. We welcome in a Super Bowl champion with the Los Angeles Rams. He's still in L.A., plays defensive end now for the L.A. Chargers, and has his own restaurant tour show, as you just saw on YouTube, that I need to be invited to. Bash, what's going on? Sebastian Joseph Day. That's good. Okay, how you doing? Yeah, you definitely need to invite, be invited. I'm tripping. I don't know what I'm not thinking right now. I definitely need to get you on, for sure. Well, listen, I got to tell you, Bash, and my, my nephew is named Bash, so I love, I love that that's what you call yourself. His name's Sebastian, too. 
I, I don't love LA right now. I don't. I don't love. I'm, I just moved here in September. I, New York, you can go anywhere in any corner and have amazing food. Give me your top three LA Rex go. Okay, I love nice guy. Got to do nice guy to vibe. Uh, you got to do this place called uh, Salona. It's in Beverly Hills. It's a little gems. They're owned by the same okay. guy. Hollywood, Hollywood, uh, Hollywood district. They're really good. Um, I love Hot Bill Chicken Fire. And then if you like coffee, okay. you like coffee shop. Uh, I love. I love. Uh, Oh, I forget the name, but it's down in Beverly. It's down in downtown LA. They're actually on my show. Uh, amazing, amazing breakfast, amazing coffee. That's a good plug. You have to you should say you have to go to Dine and Bash on YouTube and check out what Dine I was talking about. I know that. Yes, I know that your love for food comes from your background. You have Haitian parents. Their cooking was really important to them, and they both worked in hotel business. Uh, and your dad worked alongside great chefs. So what is the goal? Like when you hang up your cleats and you're thinking about your future, do you want to be in food? Do you want to be in front of the camera? Because your energy is so great. Um, yeah, I definitely want to be in front of the camera. But it's actually pretty interesting how Dine and Bash came about. Obviously, I want to be in front of the camera, but it was during the pandemic when a lot of businesses were, you know, in trouble and they were going through a, mm -hmm. a really big hit. And I thought, you know, why not highlight these businesses and give them give them their flowers, give the people their flowers that have created these restaurants and highlight them and kind of like break that third wall. Cause you know, you go to a restaurant, you really like the food, if it's good, and you go in each and every day, but you really don't know like the stories of how the people that created it and how um, it yeah. was curated. So I just thought, you know, why not? why not highlight these people and like show a different side of these restaurants and the people behind it that created it. So it kind of builds that connection and also highlight them um, and help them during the time. So it's kind of honestly just more so like something I did just to help, you know, like just to highlight people Yeah. And it kind of be, and, and it kind of helped with my media stuff. And it just kind of naturally just became a thing. I don't know. It wasn't really, it was more so just to kind of do a good deed, to be honest. Gosh, I love that. And it was so helpful. And it's so true. Like the, one of the hardest hit industries was the restaurant industry on both coasts. And you did it here in LA where it's so important and meaningful. And you're doing this all and thinking about all this while football is going on. And you won, a, you won a Super Bowl ring. Like you have, I, by the, I saw Andrew Whitworth with this ring at Super Bowl last week and I about died. Because yeah. I remember the crazy one from 2015 when Kraft went nuts and made that that crazy one for the Patriots when they beat the Seahawks. And that yeah. one was bananas to me. This one was insanity. Now, the Chiefs had their parade today, Bash. What is yeah. the one memory that sticks out to you from last year with shirtless uh, Aaron Donald? I think the one memory that sticks out the most was when we were all, when we were all gathered on that stage and just the camaraderie, right? Like the camaraderie, the love, the brotherhood, um, popping bottles. Like it was a party. Of, it was a party on that stage, man. And, you know, those bonds will be held for life. Um, and it, it really was amazing. Like every second of it. Uh, of course, AD had to flex, take off his shirt, had to get the people going. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, man, it was it, so many amazing memories. And, uh, those guys are amazing, man. That was by far one of the closest teams I've ever been a part of. And uh, it's, it's such an amazing opportunity, man. It was such an amazing opportunity. Were you tired? Like, are these guys tired? Are they going to take a nap? Because I know that, like, none of them have slept. Nah, you don't take you don't take a nap. Honestly, you really don't. From the, the day you win the game, the day you win the game to the next day of parade, you, you're, like, up, like, 48 hours. You know, your body your body's just on – just on adrenaline, you're just going, you know? The bottles game get popped everywhere. Nothing but positive vibes, so I don't know, man. You never get tired when you win that bowl. Uh, quickly, why is Mahomes so special? Because you guys, obviously, with the Chargers, you face them a lot. You have not gotten a sack on him yet. No, oh, yeah, and that's the biggest thing. I think what makes Patrick so special is um, his ability to to move out the pocket, but also, also evade trap, like a, a, evade traffic. Like he's so good at somehow getting out of trouble and still be able to make the throw. You know, a lot of quarterbacks are in the situation of, you know, when they get pressure, they're running out the pocket and their first thing is not to really 
make something out of it. You know, I think Patrick, Lamar Jackson, um, and I'd probably say another quarterback's really good at that. Honestly, I, I honestly give those two, and maybe Aaron Rodgers. Those three guys are just elite at doing that, being able to extend plays with their legs and still finding their guys down the field. Yeah. And Patrick just excels at that. You know, he's one of a kind for sure. Yeah, but he's and he's got two rings now, so he's really above all those guys like Aaron Rodgers. We were just talking to James Jones about it. Your Chargers had a great year. You had a career year, which was amazing, and we love to see it. What was behind that? Um. I think what behind that was honestly uh, just, you know, our backs were against the wall and, uh, you know, we had to, had to get it done, <laughs> you know, like a lot of injuries, unfortunately, on the D line, um, a lot of injuries overall on our team. And, you know, we just had to find a way to get it done. And that was our mindset. You know, we couldn't make excuses for what we had to do. Um, a lot of adversity, but we had to find a way to get in playoffs. And that was the goal. And uh, yeah, that was really it. That was just the mindset, to be honest. Uh, and Justin Herbert, you didn't mention him. You mentioned quarterbacks that are hard to sack, hard to get into. I got to talk to him during Super Bowl week, and he's so tough. I think the ribs were downplayed, the shoulder was downplayed, uh, yeah. and everybody talks about that. What's something that we don't talk about when it comes to Justin Herbert, a guy that you face and practice against all year long? Oh, I feel like I feel like Justin still doesn't get the respect he deserves. I, I believe that Justin is. I believe Justin's a top top three, top four quarterback in this in this league, and he's super underrated, super slept on. And I think people fail to realize his toughness. I think the biggest thing is, you know, um, no no shade or no offense to Patrick at all, right? Like everyone mm -hmm. obviously, knew Patrick was hurt during uh, playoffs, you know, during Jacksonville game or whenever he did sustain that injury. Well, Justin was hurt since week two, like with multiple injuries, like he was hurt with his ribs. He was hurt with his shoulder, like labrum. Like he was, Justin was jacked up all around and you never heard one peep. You never saw it. You never, you never ever heard anything. And that just speaks on who Justin is. You know, he's a competitor. He's always going to give his all and you'll never ever hear him make an excuse at all. So, you know, Justin's elite and the throws he he makes are unreal, like in practice and games. And obviously, you know, everyone knows how athletic he is. He's another guy, obviously, guy that could extend that could extend the pocket as well. I you know I just didn't wanna I don't wanna be the guy to gas up my own teammates on TV, but yeah, you know. <laughs> but yeah, no, Justin's no, the real I love deal. It. Real deal, real deal. Holy Sebastian, for sure. my dog. Are you in are you in LA for the offseason? Yeah, I train out here, honestly, because back home is super cold and I don't want to go out there. OK, I well, you and I are going to get we're going to get together. We're going to link up. We're going to go and we're, we're not going to the nice guy. We've been to I need to go to places I've never been. I'd like to, huh. to try some Haitian food. If there's Haitian food, oh, spots, yeah, I'd love yeah, to do that. So sure. let's do it. OK, OK, for sure. A hundred. I got you. OK, Sebastian Joseph Day, check out Dine and Bash for that coffee shop that I got to find and go to. We appreciate you. What a year. Congratulations on the success with the Chargers. And let's keep it going next year, OK? Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Have a good one. God bless. Later. See you, Bash. All right, we'll be back on Up and Adams. Do not go anywhere. The parade is coming up. We'll go over uh, some of the things I think will happen. Or we won't, because we don't have time. But whatever. Super Bowl parade in a 37-ish degree Kansas City. Lots of fans showing up at 6 in the morning. Tucker Franklin covering KC Sports Network joined us drinking a Bud Light can uh, that was probably kept nice and clean. Who needs a koozie in that sort of weather? Here's some things that I think are going to happen in this parade. Juju Smith-Schuster, I mean, oh my gosh, what a couple of hours for him. He and Jackson Mahomes team up and break TikTok. They do a TikTok together. A.J. Brown then shows up and Derwin James on Travis Kelsey the suplexes Juju Schmidt-Schuster. That's what I think is going to happen. A uh, viral moment. This was absurd yesterday between the va Valentines and the holding and all of that. I also think the winner of the podium will be Chris Jones. Kind of an easy, safe choice, but I don't think it'll be Travis because Travis is going to get supplanted by his mother, Donna, who's been the real star of the week, and they talked about it on the New Heights podcast. She's going to come out, and she's going to say, you got to fight for your right to party, and she's going to drop a jabronis, drop the mic. It's going to be over. Donna is going to win and steal the show. Corn dog tattoo. Somebody, in case you got a corn dog tattoo in the last 24 hours. I know you did. Show it to me. I want to see it on Twitter. Uh, Melvin Gordon will throw shade at the Broncos. Brett Veach will start a make dead picks chant, a la little shade towards Les Snead and company. Mahomes catches a 
ball from Jason Sudeikis, who's on another float. Paul Rudd's wearing a Pacheco jersey. Somebody drunkenly tosses the Lombardi. That somebody is Dante Hall, the human joystick. And nobody goes shirtless because Aaron Donald ruined that for everybody.